Welcome back to another exciting YouTube of the panel bug. And I realize I'm a few videos in and I haven't discussed what I'm actually going to do with the 1967 Beetle that sits in my backyard on Jack, on uh, not jack stands, on cement blocks right now. And I thought I better start talking about that or this is going to be like a surprise show and I don't want to do that because, you know, surprises make for very terrible uh, views in the first couple of videos. So, here we go. I'm currently sitting in a 1971 Volkswagen Bay Window bus. Uh, this particular bus is a parts bus. The underside of it is completely rusted out. The back suspension was only held on by a few bits of metal and mostly rust and two brake cables. So that made it very easy to just shake and drop. Um, I'm actually in it right now and it's moving because it's balanced on the four tires stacked up underneath the middle of it because it doesn't have an, any front beam or back suspension. The idea for the panel bug is going to be to cut it about here-ish, cut the bus about here-ish and shove this on the back of the, the bug. I uh, love the pictures of everybody's uh, versions of that all over the internet. Uh, they're called delivery bugs, they're called liveries, they're called, um, I saw one called the uh, bread truck, I think, or bread delivery truck, which I thought was really cool. Uh, and I've been watching videos and tons of pictures and, and all that stuff on how people have done that. And I love it. And with as bad as the back end of my bug was on the inside of it, I thought, why not go for broke? I, I'm getting better and better at this metal stuff. And I've always liked to go bigger and bigger on my projects, so I thought, why not build a car from scratch and cut a bus and a bug in half and put them together. So here we are, parts bus. The reason why I have this bus is in the next 10 over, there's a 1979 bay window bus that I started restoring before I got my hands on the bug. So I currently technically have two Volkswagen projects going on, focusing on the bug for now, but the bus needed parts from the front end of this bus. So the front end of this bus, like the floor and some of the other star parts, like the doors, will go on the 79 bus. The back half was scrap, for me anyway. So I thought, why not? The package area is almost pristine on this. The wheel wells are really good. The, this side's been cut up for uh, sheet metal, but since when I cut this, this will go down. This is about the floor of the bug. So it's only a little bit of metal up here. But all these support beams are, are what I need in the bus. And then there's nine and a half inches right here that'll go like that. Um, that will shrink this to the 50 some inches from the 60 inches that this is, uh, 60 plus inches this is to go. So the trick is to shrink it and cut it off right about here and then these vents will be lower. I think I will keep those vents. I'm not a huge fan of the way they look, but they don't the scoops on a 79 bus do not need to be that big on for airflow on a type 3 engine. Cuz if you look at a type 3 engine's vents, they're not enormous and my car Huey runs great on those vents so I'm gonna I'm thinking about pinching them in a little bit and uh, there are there are uh, CAD models that I can run for airflow but I'm pretty sure I'll be good um, with that so the magic trick will be cut this in half cut this in half squish it together and then the overall roundness of the roof will have to be tapered to match the bug uh, but I'm not going to do that until I figure out how much roundness is actually already here the curve of this might actually line up pretty good and then I'll just need to taper wherever there's also the the seam line here and the gutters on the outside that I'll have to line up so there might be little magic cuts every now and then 
Um, but that's how that, you know, goes. The goal is to do all that and then it will be flat back here, not up and over a, a doghouse cooling because I'm using a Type 3 engine as well, which I'm also building. I haven't got very far on that because I haven't really cared yet, but I have been amassing all the parts. Type 3 tins are actually pretty hard to get a hold of unless you want to spend a small fortune. Uh, but thankfully I was able to go to Way Out Salvage and get a good, great deal on all the tins and the, the hardware that makes the Type 3 engine flat pancake instead of doghouse, which is great. So the key will be to just keep on chugging. Get this all, you know, chopped up. Then the front half of this bus, um, I may actually take the front clip of the bus, the nose, and make it like repair it pristine just so I can sell it because there's only a big, there's only a dent in it. There's no rust holes, there's no cracks, there's no breaks. Um, just to give myself a little bit more money, I can do a little bit of work up there, sell it for a little bit more money than I would have normally got if it hadn't been fixed, um, and then go from there. If I cut something off this that I don't need and it's in somewhat good condition, it's going for for money for the, the bug. Got a big pile of uh, L channel here. That's going to be used to brace this. I'm going to brace here to there. And then, you know, across and, and probably from there to there and there to there and there to there, you know, over brace it. Because when I pick the thing up, I want to be able to chop it right down the middle and take that halfway and take that halfway. My biggest problem right now is I'm actually at the back of the tent and the back of the bus, but I need the back to go out the front. So I'm probably going to end up throwing this thing on dollies and then roll it out spinning around, backing it in, chopping it off, and then I can get it to the bug to the bug out back. So but that's the plan. Um like and subscribe so you can watch this whole thing. My Instagram links are below. Um this isn't the only project on this on this YouTube channel, but it's the primary one. I'm um, working on, I work on everything, so I'm working on some electronics projects, I'm building a small uh, companion robot, I'm working on a, a replica mopeda, if you don't know one of the, what one of those is, it's pretty cool. Uh, they're three-wheeled 50cc mopeds from, I think, Italy in the 40s. Uh, there weren't that many made, but there's way more replicas out there than there were, so it's kind of a fun little thing, and because it's 50cc and a trike, they're actually street legal in my state. Uh, so if I put all the right things on it, like turn signals and all that stuff, I can drive down the road. Um, that's a summer project next year, but I'm building the buck now so I can make the mold, then I can make the body, then I can make the drivable. Um, but yeah, so like and subscribe, check things out. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook if you want. And uh, keep watch on this spot, this channel, because things are going to start to get really busy. I don't slow down much, so it's it's getting chilly here. Uh, not as cold as I like to stop things, but it's making it a little bit more difficult to work on metal. If you work on metal in cold weather, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I think I can do it, and if I can't, there's no point in me starting it, so I didn't, I didn't start something to not finish. And you guys liking, subscribing, and and uh, clicking the bell so that you can follow along and get updates is definitely my motivation to keep this thing going. And I definitely want to see this drive at a car show in like another year. So we're just going to keep on chugging along.
yourself this the biggest thing I recommend to do when you're doing a fan removal by yourself don't do it by yourself my goal for this weekend was to get it done I'm a day early after that much work probably gonna take the rest of the day off and tomorrow Woo, it's like 100 degrees out here this is insane Okay, now the easy part's happen. Take all the rust off, put all the pans in, push it back underneath. Oh wait, I'm gonna do the body too. Ah.
that. That was a few hours. Who am I kidding? That was most of the day. <laughs> it was about four hours of work with two hours of prep. But dang, that looks good for a start. A little bit more sanding. I'll be able to get this whole thing prepped for the pans and then ready for the rest of this to be de-rusted. I'll probably just sandblast everything after I remove the front beam and the back. I'm in the air conditioned garage. Not normally air conditioned, but I added an air conditioner for the window. So, you know, yay. That's that wind you're hearing. Feels wonderful. Beautiful. Almost definitely no trimming. No trimming needed. Gonna have to hold them down when I weld them, but that's my fault the way I stored them. They are gorgeous in place. Oh, so nice, so nice. It's like a glove. Well, that was exhausting. Tarboard's off, though. I had to remove a lot of it to do the... Uh, remove the pans. So, ta-da! I'll put some phosphoric acid on it, as suggested by Duckman, and then we will... Put a really nice coat of something on it to protect it because you don't see much of this. Yeah, but it'd be cool to have. And then soundboard or soundproofer over the center tunnel. Of course, sound protector can wait. I gotta get the pans in, but first the phosphoric acid and then the oh, paint and all that. And I gotta. Weld all the way around there. Going this weekend, it'll be in the past for you, but my future, to a place in Tulsa called Bug House that does a bunch of tons and tons of VW parts on hand to pick up a transmission, transaxle uh, cradle to hold that up because right now it is just laying there and all the accoutrements that needed to make that work. But I'm pretty proud of myself. Once I get the uh, pans welded in, I will remove the transaxle back wheels and the front beam and start working on them as much as I did the pan sections to get them restored and protective paint. I'm gonna have to add some metal in little tidbits of spots, but that aren't too bad, but I'll repair them. Nothing in the actual supports, just in the, in the corners. And then use some body seam, seam, sealer, uh, seam filler to work on it. Airplane, hide up there. There it is. At this rate, I should be done probably in four or five days to the point where this can go back underneath the car, but I still got to do the heater channels, and that's going to wait a minute until I can get some more play money to play with, as I say. But it won't be too long for you guys. These videos are let out as I get them edited, not as I film them, so. Okie doke. There it is. Today's the day. Cleaned, prepped for pan welding. Might rain Sunday, so get the pans welded in, get all the stuff done so that I can 
park it under some tarps, make sure everything's dry by that point. I got basically four days. Today is the day. Let's do this. For me, it'll be a little bit of time. For you, it'll be... One down, one to go. Boom! And better at welding, too. Thankfully, these are just spots. These are not beads. Because I only have a little flux core. Very happy. Okay. Time for the rust performer stuff. Just goes to show you how uh, 50 plus years of road grime works. Bolts are out. Stuck on like glue. I didn't even have to get a pry bar. The thing just wasn't moving for a minute. Well, that was easier than I thought. I tried to pull it off and it didn't work. I lifted straight up and the whole thing popped out of my hands. Who would have thunk it? It is pretty grody. And now it's ready for the resto to begin. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Clean it. Disassemble it. Clean it. Restore it. Put it back together. And then there was two. Okay, now I can get to all that. Get the grease cleaned up. Rusted, rust remove, take off the spring plates and the inner parts of that. This guy over here, put the bolts in so I wouldn't lose them. We are at the essence of a car stage. That is where I'm at. Time to flip her over and do the underside. There we go. Give it a good wire brushing. Looks freaking awesome. The uh, pan has one tiny hole. The beam, whatever, center tunnel has one tiny hole right there. But that's easy to fix. And I, like I poked it, it's not, like I jabbed it with a screwdriver. It's not bigger than that, so that's a good thing. So, yep. Gotta get to work on these heater channels now. These guys are the bane of my existence. If the heater channels were bad, I probably wouldn't have worried too much. Now my one concern is these holes on there, I'm missing one like whole section. Do they line up with that? Because that is exactly mounted where it's supposed to be, where the old one came off. I know I probably should have kept the old metal, the original, but I wanted it to be, I didn't want to break the welds on my new pans to make the welds on the old metal. Um, but I do have a reprieve. I may not even need that section the way it is. So you can buy that section, but I may not need it that way because when the bus rear end comes on, that package tray is gone. So I may just recreate this section down here 
and that corner way over there I don't know if you can see the yeah see I may just recreate that to mount to the bus floor because I have a type 3 engine door that'll be over top of my engine because the type 3 engines going in the sky with special uh, air ducts I'm using the air ducts from the the bay window bus to feed air to the type 3 engine so I don't have to worry about that as much so it'll be a type 3 engine in a in a type 1 bug with a type 2 bay window back end maybe I should call this project 123 ha um, but yeah these these guys are crusty all the way around the firewall isn't bad at all I've banged on that in a couple of places and it is really solid and the wheel wells are really solid which is helpful and those wheel wells back there are really solid um, from both angles package trays all chopped up but eh, who cares and then yeah so that is uh, that is where I'm at right now See the back here. See, I won't need this engine compartment as much as, like, yeah, sure, it's got the flange and the firewall, tarboard firewall stuff, but I don't plan on using it this way. Type 3 engine bay is going to be the way to go, and then the vents will be on the top of the bay window bus, sucking air back down in. So. I may do vents on the bottom of the bus, you know, like the the early split windows, or I might keep the bay window. I'm leaning towards the bay window because I already have that metal. So yeah, here we go. 67 one year only deck lid. It's actually in really good shape except a little dent. Or actually it's a rust because that's not a dent. Aha, I thought that was a dent. That's just a little rust. It's actually the teeniest of dents right where the the nose goes. What is that? <laughs> Nothing! Probably something bumped into it and scratched up the paint. So, yep. There we are. Seam sealer going on. Getting the hang of this. Had to patch a tiny hole right there. You might be able to see where it's a little bit speckled. There was probably a pencil eraser sized hole right there. And so I just dot welded it until it was filled in. Now I'm gonna flip it over and seam seal the other side. Because I don't trust my welds 100%. <laughs> but seam sealer will keep it a lot more watertight than a weld anyway. Because I'm not going to bead weld it. And you want it to flex a little. Okay, time to flip it over. For me, it'll be a lot of, like, muscles. But for you, it'll be like... There we go. Got to goo on the silly sticker. I'm going to do that while the front dries. Yeah, I might have went a little overboard by doing both sides, but I'm not worried about it. I'd rather be safe than sorry. The pan is prepped for paint. Yes, I'm doing it outside because it's a pan. Not really super worried about the pan because with the sound deadening and the body touching and all that stuff it will be fine but lots of people paint their pans crazy colors right now mine's a mix of two different primers because I ran out of the black primer and rust reformers and all that stuff so yeah why not but big reveal Ooh, 
jumped over a cord. Silver. Because, hey, why not? <laughs> I'm interested in seeing where the silver will poke out and sneak through and show whenever everything's on it. Because you're not going to be able to see the pans, the bottoms, the floors, because of the sound deadener and the carpet and all that stuff. But you might see it in some places. Especially whenever you're looking under the car and stuff. So, yep. Yeah, going with silver. Because... Why not? There you have it. God, it's bright. Really interested in seeing where this will peek through. I'll flip it over and do the bottom next. The bottom, I probably will do multiple coats more than the top. Just because I want it a little bit tougher and then I'll probably clear coat it so that it's easier to wash clean off whenever I get it dirty. This isn't going to be a show car like Concourse, but I'd like to have it a little clean, keep the rust away. Oh yeah. I'm like a kid with the Hot Wheels. I used to paint all my Hot Wheels with the the silver paint from the little bottle, the little tester bottle of silver paint. I loved painting my cars silver. Chrome, silver, whatever you want to call it. Well, it's just about lunchtime, so I think I'll take a lunch break. And then hopefully I can flip this puppy over because I don't want to scratch it up while it's flipped, being flipped. Ha! Funny. You see it in your head and then it takes you a while and then poof. Now it's a real thing. It's a very nice sunny day, very little breeze, I'm not really worried if anything ruins the paint like in little specks, ooh that's bright, you can't see it, but right there, it's super bright in my eyes, the camera's compensating, um, it's like looking into the sun directly, it is super 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 shiny, in other words whenever I'm over here I go, Yes, Jesus, I'll see you. Oh. That is the worst impression of Robin Williams I've ever done. Not that I'm good at it, but you know. Silver on both sides. I'm very curious where this will poke through. Obviously, the bottom will be noticeable, but on the top... I'm very curious where silver throw shoot through. Obviously, the you know this jack stand, jack points. But will you really see that? I mean, you're gonna see that if you're underneath the in the wheel well. That'll be fun because you know the wheel well. Depending on the color I choose, I'm not gonna do that. Uh -huh. I mean, I could do that in silver. Anything on the bottom, silver. Ah. Maybe. I don't know. I've already decided on colors on it. Cream is definitely going to be one of them. Like a cream off-white, but it's going to be two-tone. But here we go. Let this puppy dry. Pan is done. Oh, now i got to get to work on this transmission. Is gonna be a lot of cleaning. It's told the transmission's in great shape. It is not the original to the car, but it is the right year. The uh, not gonna disassemble it, but I will change the fluids out inside. Then I need to get. I did not end up with the cradle or whatever it's called, the transmission mount that goes underneath. So I gotta order me one of those. With the two big bolts. I thought I had one at a semi-local shop, but they were out of stock and I had to order it from them, so I'll probably go back and order it from them now. I was ready to pick it up that day, but they didn't have any and I wanted to shop around. If I got to order one, I might as well shop around now. Still a good price, so I'll probably order it from them. 
I'm actually turning this over myself. Ha! Ah, fingers over. Okay. Let this beauty dry. Ooh, that's bright in the eyeballs. The more I painted it, the hotter I could feel the heat coming off because it was reflecting right in my face. That was funny. Beautiful. Okay. Let that dry. Finish the front beam as soon as I get the ball joints. Got two of them done. The lower two are really hard. So as soon as that's done, I can mount that back on here with some temporary tires. I gotta rebuild the brakes. They're sitting here ready for rebuild. I'll probably do them whenever it's raining this week since I can do them inside. It is gonna rain this week, so this guy might move into the garage and Huey might park outside, but I got a car cover for Huey. He's not a, not a trailer queen, but I'd rather keep him a little bit protected. There we go. Nice. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so you can get updates whenever I upload a new video. I'm trying, I'm shooting for about one video a week. So as I get them edited and, and out the door, that's my goal towards the end of the week. Uh, if I can get them edited fast enough, you'll see them on a regular time basis. Um, so like and subscribe, follow me on Instagram because the Instagram's actually way ahead of what I'm doing in the videos. So you can kind of see a sneak peek if you see me on Instagram and Facebook. But thanks for watching. Here's what you're going to see next time on Tinkering Guy.